everyone. I'm Ian McCarthy of Lifting for Life, and today I would like to talk to you about why I think successful dieting needs to be restrictive. And I do realize in saying this that there is profound potential for misunderstanding here, so I do want to state from the outset what I don't mean. I don't mean that I think successful dieting need, excuse me, needs to be dieting in which you only ever eat a very limited set of foods, no other foods are to be eaten in any quantity in any context. You must eat a particular number of meals per day, no exceptions, and if you don't do this, you simply will not achieve your body composition and health and performance goals, etc. I think approaches like that are unnecessarily restrictive, and indeed, more than just being unnecessary, they can be really damaging to people and induce stress that is unnecessary precisely because you're not getting additional benefit out of it. You don't need to be doing it. So there's both absence of good reason to do it and good reason to avoid doing it. However, I don't think this naturally leads to the conclusion that we should think dieting need not be restrictive. And I understand that there might be two different discussions being had here. When someone says dieting shouldn't be restrictive, they might simply be referring to the if you want to eat a banana, you probably can and still achieve your body composition goals, etc. So I think a lot of the discourse which happens around this topic is arising as a response to those extremely restrictive approaches. My fear is that the pendulum is now swung too far in the opposite direction with people now saying, I got in certain shape, I did a contest preparation, and didn't restrict at all. And I think this is uh, technically inaccurate, and I think it's, it's misleading and gives the wrong impression. So I realize I'm now two minutes into the video and haven't really articulated my view. So to clarify what I think, I believe that in the overwhelming majority of cases, there is a discrepancy between what someone would eat if it didn't matter, if it was purely taste, pleasure, no influence on your body composition, your performance, your health. It makes no difference. And that which someone actually needs to eat in the real world in which what you eat affects your body composition and your performance and your health um, in order to achieve those goals. So because of that discrepancy, that is where the need for restriction comes in. I don't see a way around that. Now, for the person, and, and by the way, I do think there are people like this, or they're very much closer to being this than most people are, people who genuinely don't enjoy quote-unquote junk foods. They don't want them when they eat them. They feel ill. They really genuinely only want uh, lean meats, fruit and vegetables, etc. And for them... What it is they need to eat might simply be they do what they want. They eat the foods they enjoy, etc. But I do think that's a small minority of folks. And for the rest of us, we do have to constrain our behavior to some extent to get what we want. And again, I don't see a way to, to frame that as anything other than restriction. That's different from, again, the extreme restriction, the unnecessary restriction, but it's still restriction. So me wanting to talk to you about this arose as a result of someone suggesting that I talk about intuitive eating. So I can elaborate a little bit on this. I think this is the discourse here, ideas which are popular, have become perhaps particularly problematic relating to intuitive eating because people there seems to be an impression, you know, my perception of what's going on is that people think intuitive eating means, okay, you see a, cup, you, you see a cupcake and you want it, so you eat it, and that's what it means to eat intuitively. And that's why I've seen intuitive eating not work well for people in terms of actual body composition outcomes, because they're essentially just eating whatever they want. So again, particularly in the context of something like intuitive eating where you don't have the the tool on I don't want to say to fall back on but the tool of macro tracking which if you use it properly 
constrains what you do, the result is an absence of restriction means that you don't achieve your body composition and, and health goals. So I think in, I don't want to make this video unnecessarily, unnecessarily long, and I think I've really presented what I need to present. So I will say, instead of the discussion being one of, on the one hand, we have restriction, particular foods that you can eat, everything else is bad. Uh, you must time your nutrients in a particular way. You cannot combine carbs and fat and so on. Okay, this is restriction. This is shit. Therefore, the natural conclusion is we shouldn't restrict. I think that's a false dichotomy. I think that with discussions like this, we frequently see false dichotomies. And I think that that can result in people, like that faulty reasoning then leads to the negative practical outcome of people thinking that the way to go is largely an absence of restriction, which I think, interestingly, can result in similar negative effects as the very extreme restriction. For example, undue stress arising from a lack of organization, which, re which results in people needing to make more decisions relating to their diet than they really fundamentally need to make. But they put themselves in that position because they think, no, I shouldn't have a set number of meals I eat per day. I shouldn't keep most of my diet consistent because that would that's a form of restriction. So if I want to eat two meals today, four meals tomorrow, and it, it's almost like, I don't want to say randomness, but variety is pursued as something desirable to a, a degree which is actually exaggerated. So again, that can result in putting aside any question of how this affects a person's body composition that can result in that same... Now, I realize that the actual context is different. It is not exactly the same to be stressed out by only being able to eat a few foods and being stressed out by all the decisions you then have to make. But in both cases, the result is more stress than is necessary to actually achieve your goals. So, again, I think instead of framing the discussion as restriction versus not, we should frame it as the degree of restriction which is necessary for you to look the way you want to look, feel the way you want to feel, perform the way you want to perform, and be as healthy as matters to you uh, while not being any more restrictive than that. So thank you so much for your time. Let me know what you think of the video and probably see you in two or three months, you know. Thanks so much.